BLHeli 32.8 has released, and I just put out a video showing you how to install BLHeli 32.8 on your ESC and how to take advantage of one of the most exciting features of BLHeli 32.8, variable PWM frequency. Uh, that video is linked down in the video description below, of course, but what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take this quadcopter and we are going to try to see what kind of a difference variable PWM frequency makes. I'm Joshua Bardwell, you're gonna learn something today. Here's the quadcopter that we're using today. This is the FPV Cycle Glide frame. Uh, the motors are some, these are some prototype 2407 motors uh, that someone sent me to test out. They're 1700 kV. We're running off a 6S battery and due to the, uh, the, the position of the GoPro and the position of the battery strap on this build, you can see that the CG is way towards the back. And I hope that is going to accentuate the problem that this variable PWM frequency is supposed to help solve, which is low throttle instability. You could always get good, better low throttle stability by going to a lower PWM frequency, but it costs you smoothness at the high end. And it's supposed to give us the best of both worlds. So what I'm gonna do with this build is I'm gonna start with the flight controller on the default beta flight PIDs, stock default, and we're gonna set the PWM frequency for this ESC at the maximum possible value. Running the ESC at 96K PWM will give the least amount of torque, especially at low throttle, but theoretically the most amount of smoothness. Then we're going to, let's not say what let's do. Then we'll set it at 48K and we'll see if the situation is any better. And then we'll set it at variable 48 to 96 and see what that does. Let's do it. But the number one place where the PWM frequency is going to make a difference is in low throttle stability. Um, so the first test I'm gonna do is just to climb up high and then lower the throttle all the way and look for the stability. And it was some bobbling there. The other thing you can look for is what Mark Spatz calls throbbles, which are wobbles when you raise and lower the throttle a lot. Um, little bobble there when I lowered the throttle, but not a, not a massive one. I'm seeing some jello here, which I'm kind of curious about. The final thing we can look for is the smoothness of the motors especially at high throttle, we can listen for that smoothness and the PWM frequency may come into play there. Let's just do a little bit of flying. Look for stability there. Little bobbles there. Again, this is on default pits. Lots of wobbling there at low throttle. Yeah, you can see a lot of movement there in the corner. And that's not me pressing the yaw stick. I'm being very careful not to press the yaw stick as much as I can. It still flies pretty good for a default pits. Whee! little bobbles there. All right, let's bring it in. Now let's do the exact same test at 48K instead of 96K. And we'll start with the low throttle uh, stability. It should be a little better. It seems like it is. It seems like it is. Let's try some throttle punches. Or throbbles. Still not that great. That zero throttle little. If I'm just a little gentler on the throttle, it's pretty solid. But if I'm a really chopping the throttle, it, it moves. Let's try some, uh, just flying around.
I think the nose is more stable. How about uh, smoothness at high throttle? Hard to tell there. Hard to tell there. Let's bring it back in and try the variable PWM frequency and see how that works. Honestly, this is a tough one to judge because usually you would be messing with the PWM frequency because you were trying to solve a specific problem, like you had mid throttle oscillation. So you go from 48K to 96K, or you're, you, you're noticing a lot of bobbling at low throttle, so you would go down. Since this quad isn't suffering from those, well, I mean, I guess I haven't checked the high def footage. It's possible we'll see mid throttle oscillations in one, but not the other. But since this quad isn't suffering from those specific problems, and I don't actually have a quad that I know is, maybe we're not gonna get quite as much information out of this test as possible. Like, why wouldn't you just leave it at 48K since it flies better that way? Well, maybe you would. Let's try the dynamic setting though and see what happens. You never know. So we should have 48K at low throttle. So the low throttle stability should be the same. Not sure about that. I think I see a little more wobble at the very beginning of the throttle chop than I did. We'll have to go back and check the footage. What about? Still that same sort of, as I just as I lower the throttle there, that same little jerk. That doesn't seem to be affected by the PW. throttle stability or high throttle smoothness. What's the takeaway from this? I wish that the problem I was trying to solve was more pronounced because then it would be easier to demonstrate the effect that the PWM frequency is having. I had this same problem when Betaflight 4.2 first came out and a whole lot of people were having problems with low throttle instability. And I made a video about how to solve that and I wanted to demonstrate it and none of the quads that I had we're really having big problems with low throttle instability. I guess that's a sign of how much better Betaflight has gotten and how much better our builds have gotten that 
this problem is a little harder to bring. It used to be a massive problem that every quad would suffer for from if you didn't solve it. Nevertheless, I do think that we saw some small differences in performance and the takeaway is that this is just another tool in your toolbox to try to solve certain types of problems. If you need more low throttle stability, lower that PWM frequency. And I would say don't use dynamic stuff if a static thing will do, because oftentimes a dynamic thing adds unpredictability and maybe adds problems rather than solving them or in addition to solving them. Use static PWM frequency. But if you find that you are not getting both smooth motors, no mid throttle oscillation and low throttle stability, if you need all of those things to be solved, dynamic PWM frequency may be the thing for you. Give it a try, see what you think, and let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching, happy fly. Do you see this baby? Isn't he cute? Hit the subscribe button. Join my Patreon, use my affiliate links, or just keep watching videos, that's better than nothing. Coco Gaga, subscribe to my daddy.